Every year in the UK there are more than 3,600 stillbirths. Every 200 births ends in a stillbirth. It is 15 times more common than cot death. So why is it that we talk to pregnant women about miscarriages and cot death but not stillbirth, which is 10 times more common than cot death? Some bereaved parents have never even heard of this term stillbirth, even when their lives are devastated by this tragedy. Many ask why they were never told it could happen. Around 61,000 babies are born prematurely in the UK every year. Premature birth is the biggest killer of babies in the UK. Tragically, around 1,200 babies die in the UK each year after being born too soon. Many others who survive a very early birth develop long life problems such as cerebral palsy, blindness, and learning difficulties. Despite these dangers, little is known about why women go into labor too soon. As well as this, miscarriage is the most common type of pregnancy loss. Studies reveal that anywhere from 10 to 25% of all clinically recognized pregnancies will end in a miscarriage. Taking 10 times more lives than cot death, stillbirth is more than a personal tragedy, it's a public health crisis. Urgent advances are needed to understand and raise awareness for the causes of stillbirth and how it can be prevented. So why is there a silence surrounding baby loss and not enough knowledge surrounding these issues? I don't think the people in general, not just women, um, don't talk about it because one, you're not really given the opportunity to talk about it. Um, no one really wants to talk about it because I suppose it involves death and people just generally don't feel comfortable talking about it. But there are women out there who are single mums, they give birth to a dead baby and yes it is a dead baby, there's so many silence about this, but it does happen, they are alive and some are alive for 10 minutes after they're born and they still die. And there's so much silence around it that silence needs to be broken. We need to talk about this. It is a dead body. Yes, it is a dead body, but it still was a live human being. And um, it's got a name. It has um, circulation. It has a heart. It, it has a soul, basically. And it's so important to talk about these things. Every parent's experience is unique and every circumstance is diverse. But the death of baby can bring more heartache that is deeper and lasts much longer than most people realise. Many parents say that they never knew it was possible to feel such dysphoria and that their lives have been turned completely upside down. Pregnancy really is a miracle. From one cell we create an entirely new human being. The first time I saw our baby and heard her heartbeat. I remember thinking it was the most special thing I'd ever experienced. Being part of your child's birth is one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. The pleasure in life and the emotions that run through you are absolutely amazing. One minute you're smiling and the next you're crying of joy and the feeling when you first hold your newborn is indescribable. I got pregnant at 20 with my first baby. I found out why my husband was on a mini deployment. He's in the US Navy. So instead of sending him an email, I decided to wait until he got home so I could tell him with the scavenger hunt. We were both so thrilled. Unfortunately, sometimes babies die before or during the birth. The midwife or the nurse will usually ask the parents if they would like to see or perhaps hold him or her. I remember looking up and seeing a dark screen. It remained dark. The usual light image of our baby was not there. My heart sank. I knew immediately something wasn't right. Our obstetrician told us he was struggling to find our baby's heartbeat. My heart sank. My fears had finally come true. Our baby's heart was no longer beating. The measurements calculated our baby had passed away possibly one or two weeks prior. Many parents feel the idea of seeing and holding their baby strange and a bit frightening. But for many parents, the time they spend with their baby becomes the most precious memory and experience that they would never have missed for the world. Society generally expects men to be strong and supportive. And many men can assume that this is their role. But this can mean that fathers' needs and feelings tend to be ignored when it comes to baby loss. Being a father watching your partner going through a miscarriage is very hard because you don't have the emotional connection with the unborn baby you haven't had, the body changing feeling that's an expecting mother has had. It's very difficult to talk to your partner about what is going on, always saying the wrong thing and being insensitive. It's not that you are, it's just the connection with the baby just isn't the same as with the mother. I think women should talk about miscarriage and stillbirth because it's a release and therapy. They usually talk to someone they know have been through the same experiences and find it's not anything they have done wrong.
I believe men don't talk about these issues is more to do with men find it hard to find someone that will want to listen. Men don't have like a mum's page on social media and it's hard for men to understand what the woman has been through. I believe it is important to talk about these issues and feel the man should be involved in the doctor's appointments after such losses so at least men might be able to get a little insight into what caused the loss. Advice commonly given is to be strong and don't cry. This advice may be meant well, but probably isn't helpful, especially when men, where society say don't cry, and if they do cry, they are assumed to be weak, but this isn't the case. Crying if you're a male or female is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of love and pride you have for your child who has died. Laws in the UK state parents cannot be given a birth certificate if a child is born dead before 24 weeks. However, some hospitals give parents a hospital certificate of birth to commemorate their baby. The majority of people are calling for the law to be changed to allow parents of stillborn babies born before 24 weeks of pregnancy to receive an official birth certificate. A lot of parents feel that the term late miscarriage is upsetting and it feel that it underestimates the significance of what happened. The reason for this term is due to the fact that the legal needs for the registration and funerals for these babies and the financial support that you may be entitled to are different. There is a taboo and silence around this subject, which our people are slowly trying to break. There are campaigns online on the world's largest petition platform to get the Department of Health in the UK to change their laws and allow registration birth certificates for children born from 20 weeks. On top of this, a popular soap Coronation Street incorporated a heartbreaking storyline about stillbirth. This storyline was made to raise awareness of the issues and help remove the stigma surrounding stillbirth. So the midwife has confirmed that you're almost five centimetres dilated which means you're definitely in labour. No, well, that's too early. Yes. You, you can stop it, though. You're going to stop it. I'm so sorry, Michelle. Unfortunately, that isn't possible. No, but he's too small, isn't he? Is he? The thing is, at this stage, he's so underdeveloped that any... Well, you've got incubators and stuff, haven't you? I'm afraid that prior to 24 weeks, it's this hospital's policy not to intervene if he doesn't breathe. What? Why? This is this is our baby. Yeah, it's a few days. I can feel him moving. I can feel him now. I know. I know. But hang on. What? What if he comes out and he does breathe? What then? Then we'd do everything we could for him. But you don't think he's going to, do you? We'll have to see what happens. Oh, no. He's yeah. so very early. Oh, no. But it could happen. I mean, you just said if he breathes, then you could help him, and he could breathe. What did he? I do wrong, Steve? Michelle, what you've done do? nothing wrong. Oh. Oh. No, please. No, no. Please. Please, Steve. This storyline was made to raise awareness of the issues and help remove the stigma surrounding stillbirth. The script was developed with advice from specialist bereavement group SANS, which ensured the proper terminology and information was used so the story would relate to viewers who had similar experiences. There are many support groups in the UK for bereavement and parents and for their families. Some support groups are run by parents who have experienced stillbirth or by healthcare professionals such as baby loss support workers or specialist midwives. The nice thing was they had this um nurse which was done when the scan when they told me there's no heartbeat she was there all that time and um what you get is a, a pack from sans which explains every step and and each family member has got a book which is for um bereavement in in grandparents in in the parents um sisters siblings everything and um the funny thing is, you first think you're all by yourself, but even with the feelings, and you think nobody understands, but every feeling you feel, there's something called aching arms, which we experienced as well, which means when you go through something through that, your arms start aching because your body is longing to hold that baby. So, and it explains everything in these books, and thanks to Sans, it was much more easier for us to understand. The biggest charities are Sans and Tommy's. Sans is a UK charity that works across the country to support anyone affected by the death of their baby, improve the care bereaved parents receive from the healthcare and other professionals, and reduce the number of babies who die by funding research and working closely with other organisations to create a world where fewer babies die. Tommy's are the largest charity funding research into the causes of miscarriages, stillbirth, and premature birth. Tommy's also provide information information for parents-to-be to help them have a healthy pregnancy and baby. 
Because of the silence around the subject, some peoples may not reach out for the support. World Prematurity Day is a global movement to raise awareness of premature birth and sometimes the devastating impact it can have on families. It's held on the 17th of November. People, charities come together to talk about the premature birth and take action on behalf of the 15 million babies born early every year. Through research and funding, there have been some interesting discoveries. Doctors observe premature babies in the NICU nestle with their soft toys. If you look at the tentacles, they look very much like the mother's umbilical cord, so the babies can hold on to them, um, and that stops them from basically holding on to the medical lines what they've got in, possibly pulling them out, um, and it gives the babies comfort. Um, it stabilizes the heart rate and also oxygen goes better into the bloodstream so they they feel or they are more healthy the babies that cradled their octopuses were found to have health improvements with their breathing regular heartbeat strong blood oxygen levels and were less disturbed by the various monitors and ivs Overall, having the tiny torn performed has a great comforting effect on the babies. Some hospitals now are calling for crocheteurs to help create small octopuses for all premature babies born in their hospitals. Who knew that a crocheted octopus toy could have such a big impact? Doctors have also said that the eight tentacled sea creatures make the babies feel more secure, as they remind them of their mother's umbilical cord. Not to mention octopi have three hearts, so maybe they offer more love and affection than other animals, even in crochet form. I think it's a really worthwhile um cause to do this because one it sort of it, it doesn't take a lot of skill even I can do it I've only just taught myself to crochet um, and yeah it, it's just little bits of wool which you probably would throw away anyway so it doesn't really cost a great deal and um, it's a worthwhile cause and the little ones and the parents will benefit from that Thanks to advances in technology and medicine, healthcare providers are now better able to treat premature babies for a number of problems, ranging from heart and brain problems to infections. Today, healthcare workers also have access to other drugs that can help critically ill babies breathe. When used with a ventilator, a gas called nitric oxide treats respiratory failure by widening the blood vessels in the lungs. Despite this and other advancement, care of premature babies can still be improved in many ways. Neonatal care is set to continue improving in the coming years. Huggies designed a special set of extra tiny nappies to fit premature babies and newborns weighing less than two pounds. They are called Huggies Little Snuggy Nano Primi Diapers, which are part of the No Baby Unhugged, a project in which Huggies promise to ensure that babies get the hugs that they need to thrive. Every Huggies diaper we make is important, but this one is the most important because these babies are so vulnerable and fragile. We put a lot of care into our micropremi production. It's not like every other production that we have. We shut down the line, we have a whole staff of people that come, they hand inspect every single diaper. It's a very slow process, but it's worth it for these babies. The nappy comes as a solution for the fragile babies who are left unprotected due to the make and the sizing of nappies readily available. The company teamed up with nurses and neonatal therapists to develop them to ensure they offer exactly what premature babies need, with special details. For example, having specially sized fasteners, as this works easiest for the parents, and narrow absorbent pads making sure the baby is comfortable, positioned with his arms and legs close to the body. Soft materials have also been used in order to prevent irritating and any underdeveloped skin. 
Pampers also released a similar nappy for premature infants, also designed with neonatal professionals last year. Advances in medical science have enabled younger and smaller babies to survive, which has created the need for even small premier nappies that are also specifically designed to meet their unique needs. The only downside? These nappies are only available in the US. They are selling on sites such as Amazon, if you can spare 50 quid that is. Hospital Trust in England are set to get an additional funding in an attempt to cut the rate of stillbirths. It's time that people stand up, that more fundraising goes into the research of stillborn babies. The research for cop death, the, the cop death went down because there was so much research going on, but not with the stillborn babies or, or infant death. And, and, and I wonder why not? It is time that something has been done against that and um, we need to speak up and something needs to be done. Currently, some hospitals provide maternity bereavement suites for families who suffer a loss, including the chance to spend some time and have photos taken with their baby. There is still much to be done to ensure the rate of our stillbirths and miscarriages go down. Reports say that nearly half of all stillbirths, 46%, the causes of death are still unknown. SANS say that the fall in death rates will not happen without extra money. Maternity units are already struggling without the staff to give the high-risk women the extra scans they need. They said midwives are not getting sufficient training and some units do not have the funds for the monitoring equipment they need. Bliss, the premature and sick baby charity, said that there are significant staffing shortages in the neonative intensive care units and the report should be a wake-up call. Over 90,000 babies born in the UK each year depend on neonatal care to survive and thrive, and that care depends on the hospitals having the right number of nurses and doctors in place to meet the quality standards, said Caroline Davy, the charity's chief executive. Slowly parents and others are making their collective voice heard and demanding action now to prevent baby loss deaths. It's time to end this silence around baby loss. Ending this silence will help in supporting fundraising which will lead to better research, investments in improved training for staff, new safety equipment, and making sure hospitals review and learn from every tragic case.